Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we are working on the sixth installment of the Mass Make series, which is Rusty Brads and Rusty Gears. And I've got all stages, well, almost all stages, available to show to you. And I'm going to do this in a two part video today because, it's, well, today and tomorrow, because I do have. A variety of things to show you so I want to make sure I make this really clear this was my first batch I did I think I I really do think I did a good job I'm very proud of this and almost like when time goes by they just keep getting like more and more you know aged so today I took my all I poked some holes in here and I put some of the brads on here that I did. And this was just like really rewarding for me because I had my little yellow um, cloth that I usually polish the furniture with. I took that, a little bit of old fashioned Murphy's oil soap. Yes, I still have the old original. I've been hanging on to this for like 10, <laughs> 12, 15 years. Odette gave that to me. And I use it every now and then, only on certain things, because I knew you can't just, you know, you got to polish these with something worthwhile. Even though it's wood polish, that's the perfect thing to use. So I did. I cleaned these up a little bit, and I put them on this card, so that way I can easily access them when I want them and need them. And I could do that with all of these as well, and I'll have like, <laughs> probably like 10 cards like this by the time I get through this which I might actually do just to keep them nice and orderly. Or I could just put them all in a jar. I might put half in a jar and do like two or three more cards. That sounds more logical. <laughs> so I think I'm going to do that. And so I'm going to tell you how I did this and the process that I'm going through now as far as doing this again with the little gears that I had in this jar. Still have a few left. So today I took those gears and I separated them out into two different categories. This one I feel, I, I, you know, I really like. I feel like they're already done. I'm trying to like shine the light here. I feel like they're, they're good enough. I really don't need to do much more to those. But these are awfully brashy. Like gold, silver, copper, and really like bright. And when I did this before, this is the effect I got. And that's what I want. So I'm going to take these and treat them today to turn them into these. And how I am going to do that is I am going to pour all of those gears into this jar with this strategic mixture that I made of apple cider vinegar and sea salt. Just a very little bit goes a long way. You only need a little bit. It's that vapor that you need in that jar to make the miracle happen. <laughs> So what we're going to do today is I'm going to pour it in there that releases that, like if you were to stick your nose in that jar you wouldn't be able to handle it right now because it would be like, whoa! And then, and I'll make two videos because obviously I can't... I can't do all this in one video, you guys. If anybody has any tips on like good editing or wants to help me, that'd be nice. And hey, there's a lot of salt left in this. Should we pour some? You know what I think we'll do? Just to prove that this is what's going on, I'm going to show you. Apple cider vinegar, the good old stuff. 
There's still a lot of sea salt in there, as you can see. So I'm going to just kind of wash that down and pour it into our our jar because we do flip this for about 24 hours and after that 24 hours is up you want to open up the jar release the fumes and allow the oxidation this to happen and this these used to be shiny little fancy little fancy dancy breads I can't even believe how easy this is so you just do this let that be. Just let it sit for 24 hours. And every once in a while, when you come out to the kitchen, just give it a turn. And tomorrow at this time, you open it up, and that's when the magic happens. Release that gas, and... Uh-oh. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> you had to push and turn. See, it's one of those guys. That's actually good, because... This is a, a vitamin bottle my friend gave me. He gave me vitamins. I took them all, by the way, every last one of them, as you can tell, and I peeled the label off and used your jar. She knows. She's, she, she's on my friends list. And she watches my videos and supports me and Muna. And thank you very much. So, yeah. Great little jars for these little projects. When you have so many different projects going on, like I do, this is just one of the many things. So we'll revisit this in the next video. Okay? So for today, I want to show you my conclusion from the last batch of Brad's and Steampunk gears that I did do already like this. And I think today we're going to treat a few with some gesso and some oxide ink. So that way, on the next video, I can show the results from that. I think that'll be a good strategy for this video. So glad to have paper towels on hand. Thank you for the contributions. That's like paper towels. Paper towels are gold. I got those as a gift. A couple rolls. So that. Whew. Okay. Here we go. So these, I'll make a few more cards of those. These, I think, you know, okay, here we go. Let's do this. Get the gesso. So today I've got the gesso. And Distress Ink in Vintage Photo and Ground Espresso. And what we're going to do first is we're just going to take a few of our gears that are like, you know, maybe they're not covered all the way. That side looks okay, but that side looks pretty still shiny. So let's, let's work on these shiny bits a little bit more. We can certainly give them a little bit of extra polish. You know, just make them kind of like really grungy and blend in. We can even try a few from the next batch. Okay, those are locked up. We're going to take these. Let's just try some clean ones, too. I want to see how the gesso reacts with this, you know, in this medium state. So let's try, these are, these are already oxidized or whatever you want to call it, <laughs> you know, aged through the vinegar salt technique. These are fresh. And what we're going to do is we're just going to put some gesso, just a thin, thin coat. Let's see what we can get out of this. I'm only going to do one side for now because I'm not sure if this is going to work out or not. But I do want to try each 
medium because one's a copper, one's a bronze, one's a stainless steel, you know what I mean? So I'm just going to, and I'm leaving the back blank so I can decipher which one is which. There's a method to my madness. The texture is really nice. Like, gesso gives you the chance to make, like, you know, not only can you erase mistakes with it, you can glossy, you can mate over glossy, you can create a chalkboard style experience on some of the different things you might paint on, and you can actually change the entire makeup of what's going on there. So, okay, so there's that. Uh-oh, I have salt on my... That's okay. Let's, let's see how this works out. Let's, let's just go for it. Gonna get these nice and wet, like really wet. I'm not gonna be easy about it. Just go for it. Awfully pretty, but we'll chip away at you later like an archaeologist and see what we find. What do you think about that? So in the next video when we come back we'll see the results from that. I actually want to take that and paint with this over top of that. Let's see what happens. I wish I had forest moss in the distress ink. Oh, oh. Could you imagine? I would be just... Oh my god! I might need to get that because I don't understand why I don't have it already. Well, I do. Challenges, challenges, okay? Okay, so next thing I brought, I found this today. This is really brilliant because it's an old fashioned acrylic nail coat. I don't know if you can see the label of that or not, but. Avon acrylic nail coat and what I'm gonna do is when I get all the rusty brads that are worthy onto their little cards I'm gonna give them each a coat and this is gonna be like seal the deal so that way they stop oxidizing because like every day they get a little worse like this guy if I continue to let this go on there will be nothing like less and less of this every day so at some point you have to like seal it off and okay you can stop oxidizing now I the first round that I did I'll admit I was a little skeptical I was like is this even working nothing's happening they look still look bright and shiny so I kept adding more salt and vinegar and then by the second day I had done that several times and by the time I opened the thing it was almost like a bomb went off and poof and like Whoa, I inhaled that and we'll never do that again. So, um, yeah, you learn your lesson with these. You just, a little goes a long way. That's why I wanted to show that in this video. And we do have our handy dandy jar right here. She's doing well. This, this is all in the works. And these will not look the same when I'm done. They'll look like this. Hmm? Hmm. Hmm? Hmm. Okay. So what's next? Is that it? Because we can't really do these. These are still wet. Those are in the works. We could make we could make some of these, I guess. Ah, why not? Alright, let's pop together a few of these. You know, when, when you're trimming your cardstock, save all your side scrappy doos like this. And you just fold them in half. And they make great button cards. I mean, you can't beat these little button cards. And so what you do, 
Got your button card there. Get your all. And you just poke the big holes right in there. Giving yourself enough room in between each one. You know you're going to take up a little bit of room, so you get generous with, with your pokey doos. Just kind of screw it in there. Because you see what I did here. I didn't, uh, this is a tight fit. I didn't leave a whole lot of room. I'm leaving more room on this one because I, that was my first card fill. Not bad for the first time, eh? But you evolve as you go, and you know how many you can fit. And this is what I can do. So what I've done, I'm going to move this because this is drying. This is the gesso coated gears that have already been salted and vinegared. This is going to be the next round of these bad boys like this and man these these look at this it's like a hundred years old right I mean, looks old i like it so just put that in there wherever you have room to grow just make it happen and yes you're going to have a lot of crustaceans coming off of that Polish all that up later. Wood polish, like I say, is the best. You can use shoe polish too. It's up to you. Whatever you have on hand. Definitely don't go out and buy anything special for this. By God, this is a, this is one of the most expensive crafts I've ever come across. And I'm actually going to be doing a video on this soon, on how to save money on paper crafting because you can seriously get trapped into feeling like you have to spend a load of money to get started on this. You really don't. You can take everything around your house. Hey, there's my original. Oh, look how cute and shiny that is. I'm going to put that aside because I do need to use that as a prop. Talk about what's a going on and how it all starts. Yeah, that looked like that you know, less than a month ago. And look at these beauties. They're just like they look like they're from 100 years, right? So, anyways, whatever tips and tricks and little goody extras you have on board in your mind, what you've learned over time, grandma passed down to you, anything like that, now's the time to bring it out and incorporate it in with your craft. This is called the evolution of the craft. And it's so much fun. You just go with the flow and with what you know. <laughs> it's awfully dirty. But you know, it looks it looks cool. These are really going to look cool with that, with these gears, once these are ready to go. Actually, these are ready to go. These are the ones that are going to be the base ones ready to go. I might coat these in a teeny tiny bit of oil just to get the mechanism spinning. My friend said that I should <laughs> um, have some inside that actually work and like spin and stuff. And I was like, oh gosh, I don't know how I'm going to do that. I'm going to need an engineer for that. I was thinking, well, maybe I can work something out. One way or another, there's got to be a way to get, you know, crafty in that department. Especially because, I'm getting another paper towel. Especially because I am going to be building a railroad soon. In my own little yard, garden, yarden, whatever it is, Hobbitville over here. The Enchanted Garden. I've always wanted a train, and I've been here 10 years now, and I have the perfect little track for it, and I think that I can build it pretty easily. And it's something I want, and 
I think I should get it. <laughs> I think I should do it. I think it would be a fun addition to the home. It's a very humble home, but this little train going from each little hobbit house and fairy house, fairy home, which are not like decked out and goofy, goofball, anything like that. They're very hidden, very obscure. Like you don't even really notice them in the garden until you go looking for them. And then they're peeking out under, you know, like certain areas. <laughs> but all that aside, I think that we need a train that goes from neighbor to neighbor because they're they're really needing to get around right now and some of their wings are broken. I've got them in fairy repair camp, so <sighs> that'll be coming along soon as well. Some of their doors, I mean they've got some serious issues going on. I'm getting old and tired. They need our help. So let's bring the fairies back. Let's help them out. Invite them back into our garden this spring. Because they have not had it easy. This has been such a rough winter on all of us, hasn't it? I mean, seriously, come on. Look at what we've all been through. This has been hell. But soon we will have heaven, so we just have to buckle down. Keep on working, doing good. Well, that's a good one. Okay. Oh, here we are. And we only have one more to go. So what do you guys think of these brads? Are they pretty badass or what? Do you think that we should do one strip of these with gesso? I, I don't mind doing that. Go for it. I polished these up much better than these, so let's let these, the second set, rest. That I just did. Because they need to be polished up and cleaned up. And let's take the last row that I did and gesso it. So I am very curious to see how this is going to turn out. And I'm using the Art Basics Heavy Gesso. Good stuff. It's one of the highly recommended ones. I got this way back a while ago, so I hope it's still good. <laughs> I think this is one of the first times I'm opening it. I may have used it one other time, if that. Okay, let's see what this does. I like it already. What do you think? Let's do a few of these too while we're at it since we have so many. Okay. Now, I know it looks like we're doing the same thing we just did a few minutes ago, but the ones we did a few minutes ago were salted in vinegar. They have a little bit of texture. These are just Plain. So we're going to see how well the gesso sticks to this as opposed to that. Good experiments. Because I've been wanting to dive into this gesso for a while. I just haven't really, haven't really found the time yet to do it. And now I actually have an excuse to do it. I've got to do stuff. I gotta get on here and like start cranking things together. So that's my deal. What do you think about that? I kind of like it. I get a little bit more. <laughs> Don't be shy. All right, we're getting thick here. There we go. And then tomorrow. I'll come through with, maybe even later today, who knows. 
Sorry to eat. Probably not too much later today. But the first round that I did, I will definitely be revisiting that. Okay, so I think that rounds it up for this one. I'm going to do a part two and show you the after effects of all of this. I can already see <laughs> this is really starting to do some cool things in the light. I don't know if you guys can see that, but the brass is shining through. And the aged part is taking hold with the gesso, whereas I can polish this up yet again. I did it already once. Do it twice. I can polish this up again, bring that brass out, and make that probably like mossy green, possibly. Wouldn't that be fun? All right, we'll see where we are next video. Have a great night, and thank you for watching.